Ruckus Smart Zone Mesh. Today I'm going to cover building a mesh in Ruckus Smart Zone for building to building wireless connectivity. The process is pretty simple and consistent across any mesh type. I'm just going to go from dashboard to access points. You can either create a new zone to contain the mesh APs or modify an existing zone. I'll actually create a new zone in this example. And I call this building to building mesh group. The only change that we need to make is going to be to enable mesh networking. Um, no need to do zero touch mesh, uh, but that is a newer feature that allows some APs running the appropriate level of code to actually mesh without ever being connected to the same LAN. But we'll leave this off for now. I'll assume you have both APs in a provisioning zone, and we'll, we'll take a look at that in just a second. So enable mesh networking, click OK. We have to do a username and password for the group. I can keep it consistent with the rest of my smart zone passwords. So now I have a new group, uh, building to building mesh group. I have the APs actually in the default zone. I've named them correctly, building A, building B, and they're both in um, my default zone, ready to be staged, running current firmware. And if you scroll over, you can see that they are currently not in any type of a mesh role. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and move these from the default zone to the mesh group. Again, doing this in the local lab just to get all the configuration pushed down correctly. So I'll select AP 1 and 2, move to my mesh group. Yes. Should move everything from the default into the mesh group. Again, which one is make sure that you allow the configs to push down, and you can see that in your events log that building A and building B should get a configuration update 940. That is, let's see, roughly the local time. I'll give this just a minute. Once this is uh, processed correctly, the APs are in the new zone, then you can go ahead and unplug the APs, mount them to the building, wait for them to come back up, and building B will actually see building A as its root access point, build a mesh link, and then you'll be able to actually bridge tagged and untagged traffic over that link. So I'm gonna go simulate that move now, edit the video down just to cut out some of the reboot time, and then we'll come back up and look and see what it looks like when we have a mesh actually built within the smart zone GUI. And again, double check, 943, both buildings updated configuration. They're in the correct mesh group zone. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and simulate the uh, no ethernet connectivity on building B, which should force that AP to use the mesh um, creation function to say, hey, do we have enough link? Do I have a mesh back up through building A? And building A will remain connected just like it would be in a typical building to building example. So again, I'm going to make that change. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Building B has been fully disconnected from an Ethernet standpoint and has no physical uplink to the smart zone controller or to the internet. So if I come back into my access points tab, scroll over a little bit and look at my mesh mode and mesh roll, it says they're both in auto. Channels are the same, so in this case channel 157 and an 80 megahertz channel, and then you'll actually see the mesh roll. And this is really the part that matters the most, is what you should see is that RAP, or root access point, should be your building A, or your AP that has a physical uplink with internet connectivity. Um, connected to ultimately the smart zone, and then building B should be a member access point. So again, you want to see one wrap, then you can see some number of maps or member access points if this is a multi-point mesh. What I'll do is I actually have a command window to the connected switch, or at least the switch where um, AP or building A is still connected. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I can ping building A, which I would expect, and that's 10 1, that looks good. And then also if I look at the IP address for my member access point, building B, which again has no physical connectivity at this point, uh, that would be 10.1.23. So I will ping that as well. And you see that those are both pingable. The nice part with the mesh is that as long as you haven't made any changes to the 
defaults for the access point, um, it will send tagged and untagged traffic as well. Right? So this is a full uh, bridge topology for any connected switches. So you can again have that native or untagged VLAN and then have a number of tagged VLANs as well. So again with that, that'll cover building a mesh with ruckus access points and smart zone. I'm using 5.1.1 beta. Uh, this should look exactly the same in version 5.0 and 5.1 GA release.